Welcome to Authentic Conversations with Ryan James Miller. Join Ryan as he speaks with top business leaders and influencers and hear how they've mastered the art of authenticity to achieve all that they dreamed of. As you hear from these leaders, seek not only to be inspired by their authenticity, but to strive for and master your own. All right. Good morning. Happy Friday. I think we are uh, just about good to go here. Uh, get one more thing set up. There's always like 5,000 things to do before you get going. It's like I need people touching a whole bunch of buttons for me. <clears throat> so today I want to talk to you a little bit about, no, you know what? First I should say, I hope you're well. Um, I have, uh, it, it's been easy to get into uh, now this kind of monotony of life that we're in. And, um, and, and I think that when that happens sometimes, especially when we're waiting for something new to happen, we're waiting for a change, a new season, a new opportunity, I think that oftentimes we, we start to kind of get discouraged. We start to kind of just blah a little bit. And so I want to tell you, first of all, that I've been experiencing some of that too. As a matter of fact, being super duper honest with you, uh, this morning was a challenge, uh, but uh, I'm here. Uh, I know that uh, being uh, with uh, you guys, being on camera, just, just it gets me energized. And so I'm excited to be able to do that this morning. Uh, but really, I do. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I don't just mean that you feel good in the moment, but really you're feeling productive. You're feeling like you can really get good stuff done. Uh, that uh, that you're continuing to pursue the things that you're after in life. Um, so I just I, I really really hope that is the case. I wish I could hear from you right now, uh, but uh, but I, I do really feel uh, feel that for you and even for myself. With that said, uh, this morning I wanted to talk a bit about um, branding, uh, but it's a little bit more. I want to talk a little bit more than just about uh, branding. Um, so we hear a lot in the marketplace uh, this uh, word, phrase, uh, personal branding. And uh, really, if you've heard that at all, uh, you probably uh, know a bit about what people are saying. But it's this idea that, you know, for ever, um, companies have been branding themselves. They've been build, building big corporate brands. They have been establishing themselves. They have been working to set a place for themselves in uh, in their industry, uh, in society, in the market. So uh, they've worked really hard to do that corporately. Uh, but there really has not been a ton of attention up until the last couple of years uh, on this idea of building your own brand. Uh, we know that that's been happening uh, all along. It just hasn't had the same intensive focus. Uh, maybe for athletes it has. That's why uh, Michael Jordan or Kobe had uh, such a prolific brand. There was so much uh, focus that was put onto something like that. Musicians and bands, they have their own brand, their own kind of feel, their own look, their own style. Uh, but corporately, uh, from an organizational standpoint, uh, other than maybe specific leaders that have had influence in society, uh, very little has been invested into an individual's brand. And what's so crazy about that to me, and you may have heard me say this before, but uh, companies have an enormous opportunity to leverage all of the branding from all of the people that work there. I mean, literally, they could have 10, 50, 100, 1,000, however many employees they have, they could have all of those people in the marketplace building relationships. Uh, advocating for the product and service that they provide. They could, they could be doing so much more if they leverage and invest it into that personal brand. Anyway, so uh, we're, we're starting to see, or we have been seeing for the last few years, this need, this desire, this uh, uh, really this, this push towards more personal branding. And it's really the idea of you setting yourself apart from everybody else, highlighting yourself, building yourself up, attracting other people to you. Uh, this is a benefit to you um, at, a, uh, at a corporate level, like in your job. This is a benefit to you um, in uh, just 
friendships and relationships. Like there is so much benefit to building a personal brand, to having a really strong identity in the places that you exist and live within. So let me talk a little bit about that. Uh, and then really I want to help you uh, articulate uh, uh, your own brand to some degree. I'm not gonna be able to, to do this at exhaustion, but I wanna help you uh, articulate that brand. And then I wanna help you see how you can execute on that like how you could actually uh, begin to live that out. So uh, there are four things. I originally said there were three uh, in the invite uh, if you came into this and registered, but really there's four. There are four things that are really important to me and I believe that are really important and critical to building a strong brand because, by the way, building a strong brand is what is going to allow you to achieve success and I'll, I'll say particularly professionally for the sake of this conversation. So monetary achievement, positional achievement, if you want to continue to pursue growth, development, and, and, and moving along professionally, uh, this is what you really need to be focused on. And this is one of the main things that you need to be focused on. And so it's going to be building a brand that number one is personal. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. That's obviously uh, right there when people talk about personal brand, though I don't use that word a lot because it's just been butchered so much. But number one is going to be your brand must be personal. Number two, your brand must be professional. And I'm going to uh, talk about that a little bit, um, uh, being industry specific as well. So it's not just the suit and tie thing like you may think or some people may think. Number three, uh, it should be proficient. I'll expand on that a bit more. And number four is it should be value driven. And I'll get to that in a little bit as well. So personal, professional, proficient, and value driven. I wish I had a fourth P to make it easy. I just couldn't come up with one. So it, that's just the way that it's gonna be. And so let's, let's begin by talking a, a little bit about um, uh, personal. And by the way, uh, this is something that if you listen to me speak on a consistent basis, this is the thing that is redundant in everything uh, that I speak about. Uh, maybe I, I should use the word consistent is, is a better way for me to say that. Redundant sounds terrible. Consistent sounds a little bit better. But this is what's consistent uh, across so many of the things that I, uh, I speak about, that I coach on, that I want to lead other people in is the personal side. Why, before we even get into uh, kind of asking a couple of questions and me helping you to answer the questions, why do you think it would be so important that our brand be personal? Hopefully you're thinking something along the lines of the same thing I am, which is this is what sets us apart. This is what sets us apart from other people in our organization, in our industry, in our market, whatever it is, this is what sets us apart is us. But beyond that, and maybe, no, actually to me personally, this is more important. When our brand is personal, then it can't be faked. It is authentic. It is who we are. And that at the root is the most important thing as it relates to achieving all that we want. So personal is number one. So let me, let me lay out a couple of things that you can think about, that you can work through, that you can consider as it relates to your brand being personal. So the first one is this. It, you should ask the question is, who am I? Now, we don't need to get super deeply philosophical here, though I would love to have that conversation with you uh, at another time. But when, when you think about your brand, you need to think about who you are. What is it that you represent? What's most important to you? What do you value? What are you passionate about? What do you get excited about? Those are the things that are so tremendously important. You've got to make sure that you're gaining clarity on who you are. This is why I push so hard on my foundations programs, uh, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in small group settings, this is where we start. We start at the foundation of who we are. And it's 
fascinating to me how so many people uh, uh, don't, they don't get super excited about this part of it. And yet when we're done, it blows them away. I mean, I just had the other day a new one-on-one -on -one coaching client that I was working with on this very concept. And he said that he was learning things about himself for the first time in his entire life and he was 35 years old. And he's fairly well accomplished. He's got things together. He's doing well. He has some decent self-awareness. But this was an exercise in him going even farther, getting clarity on who he was. So who are you? Answer those questions. What is most important to you? This is gonna be the beginning of the roadmap of building your brand. Because again, if you can understand who you are, you can communicate to other people who you are. And that is what begins to build the relationship. The other thing I should say here is what, what is so important uh, and you've probably heard this said as it relates to sales and marketing, but this relates to everything. People do business or people interact with people, right? They don't interact with brands. They don't interact with businesses. They don't interact with corporations. They interact with people. And it's people that they know, like, and trust. That's a mantra that we hear all the time. And so again, it's so important that when you get into an interaction, a human-to-human -human interaction with another person, that you put your personhood forward. What you're about, what you care about, what you're passionate about, what you're excited about, what you love, that's gotta come at the front of this. And that is going to help right away from the get-go to set you apart from other people. Second to that, along the lines of setting people apart, so in this domain of, uh, of the personal side, if number one is who are you, then number two is what makes you unique. Now, this is a, a very challenging um, uh, uh, conversation to have. This is a very challenging area to dig into because um, we share many of the same traits, similarities, gifts, and talents as other people. We absolutely do. And, uh, and you probably heard me say that, um, you know, I, I, I often um, stress the importance of, of, of of people having equal worth and value regardless of their gifts and talents. Like that is super duper important to me, especially in light of, of the narrative that we have in society today. That said, there are still things that make you different. Like, thank God there is not another person like me. Like, I, the world doesn't need another me, definitely does not need another me. But that's also to my benefit. There are just specific things. God has made me a certain way. It makes you a different way. And so let us highlight those things. Let us find out how all those gifts and talents, passions, uh, uh, joys, how all those things come together to create one unique human being that other people can interact with. That's what we want to, that's what we want to identify. So what is it that makes you unique? What is it that, that really sets you apart from other people in the best of ways? Not in a bragging kind of way, just what is it that makes you different? Why do you stand out? And, and, and even you can even begin to ask why you want to stand out. What, what is it that you want to stand out for or from? That's important too, because a lot of times that's telling of who you are. So again, who you are, right? Who, who am I? Who are you? is number one. Number two in there is what makes you unique. And then the third thing is what should others know about you? It is so interesting to me how well, I get into these conversations with people and I'm trying to help set them apart from other people. And we dig into all these different areas of their life. Um, a, a unique one I had a while back, I was working on a LinkedIn strategy with a, a guy that worked for a, a large company and he was pretty successful in sales. And we we're talking about creating video and how just don't do video like everybody else does video. Like I don't want a bunch of data on a whiteboard. I don't want uh, you trying to motivate everybody else if that's not your gig. Um, but what is it that makes you set, what, what sets you apart? And he's like, I don't know, man. And I'm like, okay, just let's just go through your day. I want, I want to hear what your day is like. 
And so he's like, well, you know, I get up in the morning, do my thing, make my coffee, hook the dog up on the leash and I go for a walk. And I'm like, oh, okay. So like, what do you do on that walk? Well, you know, just walk around the block, kind of ponder my life, think about my day. Um, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do this or I'll do that. And I'm like, wait a minute, like that, that, that's something that others should know about you, that you set aside time in the day to do that. And you like to walk your dog and you like to have a cup of coffee going. What are some of the things that, that, that you're thinking about on that walk? And we got into that conversation and I'm like, that is exactly what you should be recording on a regular basis because there's other people that value that time in the morning, that value those types of things, those conversations in their own head. And they'll resonate with you in that way. They'll be more attracted to you because they start to realize there's some similarities between you and them. And so that is something that others should know about you. It, obviously it makes them a little bit unique, but it, it's just, it's something that others should know about you. If you are um, an amazing cook or, um, you love to swim or you, um, had this crazy story in high school that, uh, is just super embarrassing, uh, but you learned and grew so much for it. Like some of those things, those are the things that other people should know about you. So take the time to share those with people. If you're not comfortable, you don't have to do that right out of the gate. Uh, on uh, on all social media platforms or at your first coffee with a prospect, but begin to test that water. You will find that people will be far more attracted to those types of things in you than they will how smart you are or what great product or service that you have to offer. And so again, when we think about our brand, that is who we are. Everything in life that has led us to the point that we're at right now makes us who we are. And so let's find a way to package that honestly, as transparently as you can, authentically, but let's package that in a way that other people can see and digest. That is what is ultimately going to attract people to us. That will oftentimes help us from running the race of just chasing down prospects if you're trying to sell or trying to figure out how to impress my boss. Um, by the way, I think about this as an employee, and I don't know how many people will listen to this as you know, just an employee in an organization, but this is for you. So people often ask me how I can get ahead how I can become more successful, how I can be seen as a leader, how I can get a promotion, how I can get a raise. There are a lot of things around do a good job, do what's asked of you, go over and above, all of that stuff is so important. But the people that I've found to be most successful in good organizations, and by the way, a good organization is key here, but the people I've found to be most successful in good organizations are those that are completely themselves. Now, if you're a train wreck, then don't be yourself, or, or maybe you need to get yourself together first. But if you are trying to pursue, and I'm gonna get into some of these other things in a minute, if you're trying to pursue um, a professional career and, and you want to be an expert in your industry, so you're trying to carry yourself as well as possible, be yourself. Allow other people in the organization to see you for who you are. What, what really uh, 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 keeps your heart beating? What is it that drives your passions? What is it that you're after in life? Those are what's far more important than just saying you want a promotion because you want a management title or because you one day want to make $500,000. Like those are fine, but those things aren't ultimately you. Those are just means to an end anyway. So what is it that you're really after? Share those things with as many people as possible. The other thing that I think is really cool, by the way, and this is a little bit of, tan of a tangent, but I do really love uh, when uh, people sit down together uh, whether they're coworkers or even I, I used to have this happen in prospect meetings uh, and we would sit down and I'd be like, look, at, let's just not talk about business for, for, for a little bit to get going. 
I, I would just love to learn a little bit about you. And so tell me like, what is one of the craziest things that you're, you're attempting to pursue in life? Like what is just a huge dream or what's on a vision board if you have one? When we start stirring up those creative juices inside of ourselves, it really gets us into our comfort zone. It really gets us into this place where we feel like we can talk because we're comfortable talking about the things that excite us. And we all love to talk about the things that excite us. So again, as we think about brand, that's the stuff that we should be focused on. Everything else can wait. But who we are, what makes us unique, what we're passionate about, those are the things that we should be talking about first. Those are the things we should be leading with first. And people will push back. I get that. I just, I don't care. Because I think that this is the most important thing when leading to attract. Again, whether that's attracting a prospect or a client, whether that's attracting a company to want to hire you, whether that's attracting a boss uh, to want to promote you, I really believe leading with the personal is the most important thing far and away. Number two, can't believe we're this far along. Let me check my time, holy smokes. Okay, that was the most important one anyway. Um, but these next three, uh, I, I wanna walk through now and, and give you some additional, just very practical answers to, or, or, or steps for you to build this for yourself. So number two is professional. So we talked first about personal, second about professional. I'm gonna talk about how these things work together, by the way. So, how, what do other people see when they look at you? What do other people hear when they listen to you? Are you carrying yourself in a professional way? Share a story. So, uh, I worked for this organization and um, uh, gotta be careful about how I say this. One, one of my bosses, um, they, uh, were dialed in at work, uh, very driven, very successful, uh, very put together, um, just dialed. Well, it just so happened that that high up person in this organization uh, had a social gathering at their house, um, had too much to drink, not like overboard, wasn't a sloppy mess or anything. I wasn't there, but had too much to drink and shared significant distaste for another employee in the organization that wasn't there with an employee in the organization that was there. That happened to get back to me because both of them were my employees and I had to deal with it. And I, I won't go into all the details of how I dealt with it, but can you imagine, I, I was only actually with the company about six months when that happened. Um, can you imagine how my viewpoint of that person changed? Not just the fact that they would talk behind somebody's back, which I didn't love, but like you put off this totally put together, polished, in a suit uh, uh, um, uh, persona in the office. And I don't care how you spend your life, like go out and have fun, do whatever you wanna do. But that's not professional to me. That's just not carrying yourself in a professional manner. So that's really important. You know, this, this, we get into this conversation a lot uh, when people are struggling with how to uh, contribute on LinkedIn. And people will say, well, LinkedIn is not Facebook. It's like, you're right. I understand that those are two totally different social mediums. I understand that one is for one type of conversation, another is for another. But you can be professional and still share family pictures on LinkedIn. You can be professional and still share stories of your athletic pursuits and passions on LinkedIn. It's about how you present yourself, how you portray yourself. What are other people seeing when they see you sharing those quote unquote personal stories and personal pictures? Are they seeing somebody that is highly motivated and driven and works hard, likes to enjoy the fruits of their labor, uh, likes to relax, likes to be a human being interacting with other human beings? Or are they just seeing like a total lush or a jerk? Like what is it that people are seeing when they look at you? 
this is another thing that I really struggle with around um, uh, uh, this idea of professionalism and how you look is you must consider um, whether or not you look the part. And this, this is like ridiculous coming out of my mouth right now because here I am in front of you talking about professionalism with a mohawk uh, and a flowered collared shirt on. So I get it. Like there are just times when we're not gonna get all dialed in and dressed up. But I don't get all dialed in and dressed up all the time anyway. There are environments where a suit and tie is a necessity to, 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 to be a part of and, and, and dress appropriately with those that I am around. And so I will do that. Um, there's also times when this is okay. I mean, I'm in my own office. We're having a casual conversation on a Friday afternoon. And so I don't mind this. I wear hats on occasion and I don't mind that but I won't wear a hat when I'm on a first consultation with an executive um, unless they too are like that. I've got to know my audience. And so it drives me nuts when I see people going on business meetings in ratty polo shirts or um, just, uh, they show up at work. Here's the other thing that's crazy to me is, you know, uh, work, uh, attire, guidelines, things like that have, have, have loosened a little bit over the years still come to work put together. Like make sure that if you've got holes in your jeans, it's because the designer did it and not because you haven't changed them in the last 37 years or something like that. Like you just wanna make sure that you always look the part. Whether that's in person or online, you want to well represent who you are first and then the industry that you serve. Um, I worked in an organization uh, many, many years ago and we were a suit and tie organization. So salespeople were required to wear a suit and tie. And so that's what we did. Um, if you're familiar with Southern California, um, primarily we were in the Orange County area. So it was a nicer area. We were visiting a lot of high end uh, architectural firms, engineering firms, law offices. So they're all dressed fairly similarly. And if anything, you know, you want to be at least just one step above the audience that you're, that you're stepping into. But then we acquired an office out in Palm Desert, Palm Springs area. And if you know that area at all, you know that it's far more laid back, it's quite a bit more casual, and it's blazing hot, like literally blazing hot. And so we hired uh, on a couple of folks uh, from out in that area, and they were given a requirement to wear suits and ties. And they were like, no way, way too hot. And so the company's like, okay, no jacket, but you have to wear a tie. And they said, you know, you, we, we can't do that. Like, it's just, it's not appropriate to walk in in a shirt and tie when my client is in flip-flop shorts and um, a t-shirt probably. And as a matter of fact, if we do that, we may be like laughed back out of the building and nobody believed them until one day, no joke, literally, I promise that the story is true. The male, it was a husband and wife partner actually that, that were the salespeople out there. The male walked into an office and he, he knew the guy that he walked into. And so they greeted each other. And uh, the, the customer that he was there to see was like, hold on, I'll be right back. He goes back into his office. He comes back out to wherever they were meeting. He walks up to him, grabs his tie and goes and cuts his tie off. Now, they had to have some sort of comfortable relationship for that to happen in the first place. But like, that was his statement that ties are not allowed out here. Ties are not appropriate for this environment. So you just wanna make sure that however you're dressing, however you're looking, however you're presenting yourself, that it is appropriate to the level of that which you're serving. Don't go too far overboard. We don't need you know tuxedos, uh, but at the same time, don't go too far under. Like you wouldn't want to see my flip-flops right now. I have flip-flops on, by the way. I mean, come on, it's Friday, I'm in my office. Anyway, so professionalism is key. And what I would encourage you, by the way, is this, especially when you're building that brand until it's very well established and you get to decide when that is, my recommendation here would be to always err on the side of too much. Be seen as a leader. 
be seen as somebody at the top. Again, like, I think it's silly when people like take all of their pictures in suits and ties because it looks good. And then that's just not what their industry typically jives with. Don't do that. It just looks silly. But at the same time, be willing to step it up a notch. Be willing to be just a, a level above the people that you're going to see. Play the part because that's the part that you should be playing. You wanna portray a good, solid, professional brand as it relates to the way you look. If you're posting video, here, here's another one. Um, I, I'll just quickly say, um, there is a difference, there's a stark difference between you just getting started, slapping a phone up, uh, up on a, a, a tripod and recording video because you're just getting going and you're just lazy and you don't take the time to clean up your videos, you don't take the time to make sure that you have not um, broken script 15 times, you've taken time to make sure that there is some reasonable background behind you. Um, I've engaged somebody personally, super proud to be in a relationship with professionally that uh, is taking my video content to a whole new level. He's been just a godsend to me because um, I love uh, recording video, feel super comfortable doing that. I was creating a lot of video. It was just too inundating for me to, to, to edit myself. And so uh, I found a professional, actually I was blessed to be introduced to a professional and he has been so huge in taking my videos and stepping it up a notch. I've been doing video on LinkedIn alone for five years and I have had more compliments about the quality of my video over the last three or four months than I had in all the years prior. And what's crazy, by the way, is, is it's still all being shot on my cell phone. It's just I have a professional behind the scenes that is able to edit it appropriately to put our best foot forward when I'm putting it back out into the marketplace. So just make sure, again, if you're getting started, that's okay. You'll build, you'll learn, you'll grow. You'll grow. But if you're just being lazy, don't do it. Same thing when you're writing. If you got a bunch of grammatical errors in there, have somebody look at it, help you. Don't do that stuff yourself if that's not your strongest suit. Make sure that when you're, when you're putting yourself out there, that you're putting your best foot forward. This is not a fake it till you make it. This is using the tools and resources that are available to you to ensure that you're out there with your best. So that's look, that's, that, that's the professional uh, look that, that I would encourage a brand to have. Number three, are you proficient in communication? So we talked about personal, right? All coming from in here, a little bit here, but more here than professionalism in the way that I look. Uh, the word professionalism can also come into the way I talk, but I'm gonna talk about proficiency more so when I'm talking about communication. So here's a couple of things to consider as it relates to communication uh, and, and, and proficiency. When you talk, when, when you're at a prospect meeting, when you are uh, sharing something online, when you are on the stage presenting, when you're at a, a, a meeting with all of your clients, wherever you're at, how, what do people hear you say? And again, let me just start by saying, I understand that not everybody is comfortable with this. I hear people tell me all the time, like, um, I shouldn't say that. People will say to me, um, wow, you, you look so comfortable. You, you just, you look like you're really in a groove and, and you really, like video is just your thing and you're comfortable in front of the camera. First off, it's not, I still get nervous before I go live. I always do whether it's live on stage or it's recording like this, even though we're live, because if I screw up, you're gonna see it. But the other thing is, is I have done this at least, at least a thousand times. And I'm not talking about recording short clips for social media. I have spoken live from a stage or in this kind of manner now where at a camera, but still live, at least 1,000 times over my 20 year career. That's not an exaggeration. I, so I've had a lot of repetition in being able to do this and I still mess up. 
but I've just gained comfortability, comfortability uh, as the result of repetition. So do your reps. That's super important as it relates to you getting comfortable with communicating. But beyond that, I have sat in far too many meetings. Sometimes even when I coach salespeople now, I'll ride along with them. Um, it's been a little while since I've done that. But uh, when I would do that, I would go into these uh, uh, prospect meetings or sales meetings uh, with, with a prospective client, and I was appalled at what I heard. I was absolutely appalled at the way that they communicated. They weren't able to well articulate their value proposition. They really weren't able to ask good questions and connect the dots. They were often stumped once they got backed into a corner. They weren't able to, to bring themselves out of those places. And I was just like, what are you doing in this position if you can't well communicate what it is you're doing in this position. So please make sure that you are practicing. Practice the things that you wish to say because this is a representation of your brand. This is a representation of you. For anybody that goes into a live presentation, that goes into a live meeting, I cannot recommend taking notes enough. Every single sales meeting that I go into, every single sales conversation that I have with a prospective client, I'm taking notes. When I'm on my coaching calls, I'm taking notes and I'm looking at notes. I'm referencing things we talked about the last time to make sure that I bring it up this time. Have a script. Now, if you are just reciting the script like a robot, and you're not exactly sure what comes next until you read what's on the line, then you're gonna have a problem because that's gonna get really awkward and really uncomfortable. So practice that, get comfortable with that. Figure out how to work your own words into that, your own personality into that. But you want to make sure that your communication is professional and proficient. You want to be seen and heard as an expert in your industry or in your position not as some novice that happened to just fall into it by accident. So please make sure that you're considering that. Another thing, by the way, when you speak, and this is something that I have had to work so hard on. So I, you, you may know, you may see that I like to talk. Um, I just, I, I always have. When I was a young kid and, um, uh, people would ask my mom uh, where I was or what I was doing. The response was always probably talking. Like I have just always talked way too much. Got me into trouble in school, was often given detention, kicked out of classes. Like it's just, it's, it's been a challenge. I've begun to use it to my advantage to some degree. But when I speak in front of a client or a prospect, or in any kind of business relation, related conversation, I want to be focused on speaking about the things that are important to them. I used to say, um, uh, speak to the things that they wanna hear. And the only reason I've rephrased that a little bit is because I, you don't necessarily just need to talk their talk. You don't necessarily just need to conform to whatever it is they want to hear. But you should consider why they are there. This is always a funny one for me when it relates to prospecting. It's like people want to have an initial conversation. Uh, they want to get to know each other. They want to have all the warm and fuzzies and build a relationship. And, and then the conversation goes nowhere. And so when I coach my clients on this, I'll say to them, okay, so what's the next step? Oh, well, you know, uh, we're waiting to get back together. And I'm like, well, didn't you set that co next conversation at the, at the previous meeting? Well, no. Well, why not? Well, because our conversation was really going good and I didn't, I didn't want to come across salesy. Like what? Don't you realize that when they agreed to go meet with you, they knew what you did? They knew what the meeting was for. They're not stupid. Their intention, while graciously getting to know you, their intention is to determine whether or not they want to do business with you too. 
It may be a far off thing. It may not be something that happens right in the moment, but they know what you're there for. So just ask the question. Don't beat around the bush. Address their needs. Address their concerns. Consider it all times. As you are building your brand, what it is that your audience wants to know that you're passionate about. Again, let me say that one. Let me say that one so, so that's restated super duper clearly. When you are establishing your brand and then communicating your brand, you want to make sure that you are considering what your audience wants to know that you are passionate about and can speak to. If it's just what your audience wants to hear, then you're gonna be talking about all kinds of nonsense things that you have no place talking about. That's why we see so much noise on LinkedIn and other social media platforms right now anyway. But if you consider what they wanna know and how your passions align with what it is they wanna know, you can become relevant very quickly for them. It's an attractive quality for you to have is to be able to address their wants, their needs. And so again, what does your audience want to know? What does your audience need to know? And how can you speak directly to those things based upon who you are, what you're passionate about, what product and service you represent? Hope that's helpful. And finally, and we're gonna wrap here um, uh, with number four. Uh, so I said value driven. I saw uh, somebody jump in and say, change it to profits. And I like that. I'm going to try and figure out a way how to, how, to, how to work that in. But when you think about building your brand, you want to be value driven. You want to add value to other people. You want to be profitable. Ah, there you go. You want to be profitable in the relationship towards the other person. You want to make sure that they receive from your brand, that they are made better, that they grow, that they earn as the result of their relationship with you. And so again, I would like for you to consider as you're thinking about your own personal brand, you're thinking about how you build out this, uh, this image, this uh, communication strategy, at all times you must consider how other people benefit from interacting with you. Again, this is so critical. And this goes all the way back to thinking about what, what sets you apart and how you're unique. There are certain things that because of what you're passionate about, you can do that other people can't do. Um, I have a friend, uh, she's become a friend that I'm coaching and she wants to, um, she wants to be a connector, but she wants to be a connector in such a way that she takes two people that are on polar opposite sides of an issue and bring them together and show them that they are better working together. And she has a way to be able to do that. Her personality makeup allows her to, to, to become a mediator, but a no BS mediator that really sheds off all the garbage, garbage and allows the truth to come together and then allows them to see that they're both in many ways after the same goal. And so that's her uniqueness in, be able, in being able to add value to her relationships. It just, oops, it just so happens that she is in an industry that she could sell a service to on top of that. So her intention is to connect people, to bridge the gap and to help them see forward. And then she can come in and actually provide a service not, not in the coaching way, but a service that supports their businesses. It's just wonderful. And so again, what do others receive? I hope my goal is that every single time that I have an interaction with somebody online, in a conversation, whatever it may be, in person, that they leave that conversation with me feeling better about themselves, or having grown in some way. That, that is my goal. In every interaction I have with a human being, it is to make sure they feel better about themselves or they grow in some way. Now they may not realize that right away because of the nature of the conversation, but eventually I hope that's how it works out. 
And so when I have free consultations, which I give away a lot of free consultations, and, and many people in my industry say, don't do that. Don't give advice away for free. I tell them, don't tell me how to run my business. <laughs> no, but really, that's, this is part of who I am. It's part of what I'm passionate about. I want to help people. If eventually they feel like I can continue to help them and they want to pay me to do that, wonderful. If not, and they just got one good piece of advice or a resource from me, I was able to refer them to somebody, awesome. I'm down for that. And they can go on their way. So what do others receive from you? And what value does that provide to them? How is that profitable? Gosh, I'm liking this word. How is that profitable for them? Because again, I hear a lot of people say, um, I give people insight into da 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 or I offer them a better service than da 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 and they don't say da 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 But basically what they mean is, is they're better at their craft than anybody else. And I'm like, okay, but all your competition says that too. What's far more important is how does that profit that person? How does that actually bring value to that individual? And by the way, this is something else that's really important. And I should have said this at some point along the way. I don't know where it would have fit in. But I, I want to make sure that when we, when we think about um, uh, these, uh, uh, these relationships, so when I talk a lot about being personal, human to human interaction, uh, making sure that we understand that it's a person doing business with another person, when you think about, I don't care what product or service you offer a client, when you think about the value that you add, how it's profitable to that, to, to that relationship, first think, first think about how it's profitable to that individual. If you are selling, um, I don't know, some big corporate solution that drives top line revenue, that's wonderful. But how does that profit the person that you're interacting with? Does it make their job easier? Do they earn more compensation as a result of that? Does it make them look better with their boss? We often miss opportunities to sell those value points because we don't think about them. We're too busy thinking about the big corporate idea. This also works when, when we're engaged in one-on-one -on -one relationships. This is from like an employee to employee, manager to a subordinate, or all the way around, subordinate to, to manager uh, a, a level. Every interaction that you have with another person, you should be thinking about ways that you can add value, that you can profit their life, that you can profit their soul. What can you do to better them? That's ultimately the goal. And if you do that, they are going to be an advocate far more often for you than not. And so as you think about all these things coming together, you think about this brand we're building um, uh, as, as a representation of who we are in the marketplace. We think about the fact that it's got to be us. That's the personal side of things. We want to be professional, and that is set based upon our industry, our image, what we want to portray, that we're proficient, meaning we know what we're talking about, and we can well articulate that to our industry. And then finally, that we are profitable, yes, that we are profitable to the relationships that we engage into. Can you not see how you would win far more opportunities for yourself? more sales opportunities, more promotion, more compensation. Like we don't, I don't do these things to first earn more money. And yet I believe with my whole heart that if I continue to represent a brand that is personally me, professional, proficient, and profitable, that people will want to do business with me. And if they want to do business with me, I earn money which is good for me, provides for my family, allows us to do fun things. So it's this big circular opportunity. But if we don't focus first on our own brand and building that identity in our marketplace, we are going to shortchange us and, and we are going to end up having to fall back on tools and tactics and me too's. And eventually that stuff just fades away. So with that, Thank you guys so much.
appreciate another Friday. Hopefully this time was more convenient for you all. Uh, we will continue on. I know we're going to have a break here in a couple of weeks. I'm going on vacation. I can't wait towards the end of June. If you have any other questions about anything that I've said today, please uh, reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to, um, to answer any questions or provide any additional support or feedback that I can. Other than that, happy Friday. Enjoy yourself. Get out there. Smash the weekend. No, enjoy the weekend. Smash next week. Thanks. Thank you for listening to Authentic Conversations with Ryan James Miller. If you found value in today's episode, please subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform and share it with others. To connect with Ryan and learn more, visit ryanjamesmiller.com.